carbon dioxide, or CO2, acts like insulation in the atmosphere, trapping heat leaving the Earth's surface. Because of that, CO2 is called a greenhouse gas, and along with the other greenhouse gases, it keeps our planet from getting too cold, contributing to making the Earth habitable. Since 1958, atmospheric carbon dioxide has been measured at an observatory on the Mauna Loa Mountain in Hawaii. The white line shows atmospheric CO2 levels rising and falling at the Mauna Loa Observatory. A fall and rise occurs each year, and the explanation for that lies in the Earth's plants. This image shows plant life measured by satellites. Plants on land are shown in green, while plant life in the ocean is colored green, red, and yellow. Plants take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, use it in photosynthesis, and release it when they die or go dormant. The Mauna Loa CO2 curve goes down in the Northern Hemisphere spring and summer when a vast abundance of plant life is using carbon dioxide in photosynthesis, and the curve goes up in winter when many plants are dormant and no longer photosynthesizing, but animals are still exhaling CO2. While this natural cycle has systematic decreases and increases in CO2 every year, there is also a long-term upward trend drawn as a red line. This gradual change toward more CO2 in the atmosphere in recent decades is in large part caused by humans. We are putting CO2 into the air faster than natural processes can remove it. We do this in many ways, including through our use of coal, oil, and natural gas, and through cement production. Cutting down forests also contributes to more carbon dioxide in the air. Here are measurements of global CO2 with the lowest amounts shaded gray, higher amounts yellow, and highest amounts red. More CO2 is added to the atmosphere in the northern hemisphere where most of us live. Why does it matter that CO2 is increasing? Even though greenhouse gases contribute to making our Earth habitable, too much in the way of greenhouse gases could lead to a level of warming that could have an array of troublesome consequences, including sea level rise and extinctions of species unable to adapt to the changes. Each of us has a carbon footprint. It's the amount of carbon we put into the air through the choices we make about energy consumption, food, and transportation. Each of us could make choices that would help to reduce our individual carbon footprints. For more information, visit climatebits.umd.edu.